The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. For forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom we are in the of Christ thy Son, who has made known thy name. By his passion and cross, we brought to the glory of his resurrection to the same Christ of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brother, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize? Run so as to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. Thus I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and train it for fear that after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. The word of the Lord. Amen. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. 
My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed they who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. Blessed the men whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. For a sun and a shield is the Lord God. Grace and glory he bestows. The Lord withholds no good thing from those who walk in sincerity. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Your word, O oh Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite! Remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. Oftentimes we hear the accusation of hypocrisy about Christians, right? For some part, rightly so, right? Especially you can look, you don't even have to look very far sometimes, even in the clergy, right, in our church, that we can see the hypocrisy that exists and has existed for the last, well, 2,000 years. But especially maybe more poignant in the United States in the last 50 years, where it's been this certain grand hypocrisy that takes place. And so because of that, we have succumbed to the fear of speaking out against sin, not only on the part of the clergy, but on the part of the entire church, that we hate speaking about other sin. And we look to this gospel today of removing the splinter from your brother's eye without removing your wooden beam first, and we forget the explanation of what it is. That is an explanation of this parable of the blind leading the blind. That it's not supposed to just be about my own personal sin. And it's not just supposed to be about the judgment of myself and others. But it's supposed to be about our discipleship with the Lord. That this understanding is meant to be how do we judge, for lack of a better sense, morality. How do we accept what is truly good and what is evil? How do we look for what we ought to do in the first place? Because Christ is speaking not about the particular sins of the Pharisees and the scribes who are in front of him, but rather their attempt to try and manipulate the law. A sin that has come up again today. That our sin in our cultural sense 
is that we have tried to mold the gospel into our own image and likeness, that we have created a new idol that is tolerance and acceptance, that Christ is saying, remove that, splint, that wooden beam from your own eye, which is you're missing out on the infinite. You are missing out on God in your morality. And if you continue to do so, you will continue in your hypocrisy. You will do it again and again and again, and you will continue to hurt people and lead them away from me. But instead, if we submit to what the Father has revealed, if we become slaves to it, like Paul describes in the first reading, to this saving message of the gospel, well, then some will be saved, and there will be great joy in heaven. But brothers and sisters, it takes our humility, our, our acceptance of what the gospel is offering, and not an attempt to form it in our image. We bring our prayers and needs before our Heavenly Father. For the preachers of the gospel, that they may carry their obligation willingly, des deserving the divine recompense for their stewardship, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the powerful and the influential may not run aimlessly, but train themselves to pursue justice and morality in the world today, let us pray to the Lord. That we may remove all obstacles to our own sight before trying to correct the lives of others, keeping our gaze on what, need, what needs the remedy of God's merciful grace in ourselves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the gift of good vocations, that many more young souls may find a home and a nest among the altars of the Lord of hosts, setting their hearts on the pilgrimage of consecration. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of Steve and Jessica Steckline, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. For all the intentions recommended to our prayers, and especially for our beloved dead, that the Lord may withhold no good thing from those for whom we pray, let us pray to the Lord. Good and generous Father, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers, that they be in accord with your will, through Christ our Lord. Blessed be you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, for to the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, so become our spiritual drink.
pray, brethren, for my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word to whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaho, Pleni sunt celia terra, Gladia Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fidei, mortem tua, annunciamus domine, et tua, resurrectionem confitemur, done venia. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Wilton our Bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Agnus Dei. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with you.